Hello everyone, welcome back to Coach Craig Sports. Today is Tuesday, so it's going to be our waiver day. Once again, we're going to be talking about the guys that are owned in less than 50% of ESPN and Yahoo leagues. A lot of these names will be pretty familiar, so if I don't talk a lot about some of these players, it's because we've already talked about them quite a bit, but I'll be going through all the guys that I think are possible pickups and how much fab I would spend on them if you're using the fab budget system. And a lot of this will vary team to team based on your needs, based on your league. There might be guys in your league that are a little bit better than some of the players that I mentioned that are available in your league. Obviously, you should go after them guys first. Some of these guys may not be owned in your league. So we'll talk about it a little bit more of that too. We're getting closer to the playoff seasons. If you're a team that has your playoff spot guaranteed essentially, then we can talk about some stashes potentially more so. Your starting lineup is probably a little bit more set. Uh, we, this is the second to last week of bye week, so we're going to have less bye week fillers, and then we're going to be focusing more on playoffs, but these are some of the guys that I do like for this week. So we'll start off at the quarterback position. We'll talk about Kirk Cousins. Once again, I talked about him last week as a streaming option. This week, he is a streaming option again. Goes against Carolina this week. Owned in 21% of ESPN leagues, 42% of Yahoo leagues, so a pretty decent shot that he's still out there, especially if you're playing in ESPN leagues. He was 22 out of 30, 314 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Did lose a fumble, though. Then he had four rushing yards, 28.96 fantasy points, and six point per passing touchdown scoring. That's the format we're going to be using for these quarterbacks. Should be another good matchup for him. As long as he gets the volume, he's going to be a good quarterback. The biggest thing with him is just volume. Uh, Carolina was a little bit better against the run last week in Detroit. Don't know if it was just Detroit. But if they're able to slow down Dalvin Cook at all, it could be a good game for Kirk Cousins. One important note is that Adam Thielen did go on the reserve COVID list. I believe he was just a close contact. I don't think he tested positive. So there's a chance that he could miss, but he's still early enough in the week that he could play on Sunday. Then next up, we got Alex Smith. Alex Smith was also on this list last week. He had a okay day, not very good day fantasy-wise. 17 out of 25, 166 yards. One touchdown, one interception, negative three yards rushing. I assume those ones were just kneel downs. Uh, 10.34 fantasy points. Owned in 12% of ESPN leagues, 10% of Yahoo leagues. So a pretty good chance that he's still out there. He goes against Dallas in week 12. This is a Thursday game since it is Thanksgiving this week. Should be a pretty good matchup for him overall. And if Dallas's offense can move the ball like they did last week, they're going to have to throw the ball some too as well. I didn't really talk about fab percentage yet. So for Kirk Cousins, I assume like 2 to 3% on him. Alex Smith's like a 1 to 2% of budget type of guy, more like a streamer than anything. Uh, Cousins can be a guy that you can play in favorable matchups going forward. Then we got Derek Carr, and he's been on this list on and off throughout the season. 23 out of 31, 275 yards, 3 touchdowns, 1 interception, 6 rushing yards against Kansas City this week. I, honestly, I wish they let him play the way he plays against Kansas City every week because he'd be a top 10 fantasy quarterback. Uh, but sometimes they put the handcuffs on. Sometimes they want to run the ball a little bit too much. Uh, 27.6 fantasy points. Owned in 38% of ESPN leagues, 37% of Yahoo leagues. Still a pretty good chance that he's out there. Goes against Atlanta in Week 12, which is a pretty bad pass defense. And then the week after that, I can't remember who he plays, but I know it's another good matchup. So he's a guy that you could probably start two weeks in a row. So he's a guy that I'd be willing to spend 5 to 6% of my fab budget on, uh, especially if you need a quarterback. Last but not least for quarterbacks, we got Baker Mayfield. Uh, he was 12 out of 22, 204 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, 9 yards rushing, 7.06 fantasy points. Not a lot of fantasy points, but it was another bad weather game. Didn't make mistakes, so a good sign for him. Goes against Jacksonville Week 12. Should be a very good matchup for him. They are run-heavy teams, so don't expect too many pass the, uh, attempts for him. But if he's able to cash in on some touchdowns, he could definitely play off as a streamer in this one. Owned in 18% of ESPN leagues, 31% of Yahoo leagues. Pretty good chance that he's out there. He's more of a guy, if you just need somebody to stream for one week, you can pick him up. So he's kind of in that Alex Smith range, 1-2% to of your fab budget. Then we'll get moved over to the running backs. And honestly, there ain't too much to talk about here. Uh, we got J.K. Dobbins. Played on 63% of snaps this past week, so good sign for him there. Things are really, really trending upward for him. Uh, we'll have to see if it was more than one game. Important to note, though, is he did test positive and has been placed on the COVID list, him and Mark Ingram both. So he's going to be out at least this week at the very minimum since they play on Thursday and maybe next week since he tested positive. But he had 15 carries, 70 yards, one touchdown, two targets, two receptions, 15 yards, 18.5 fantasy points. 
He's owned in 48% of ESPN leagues, 63% of Yahoo leagues, goes against Pittsburgh in Week 12, which he won't be playing. Uh, so if you are in an ESPN league, he's definitely a guy you want to pick up, stash on your bench, because he could definitely pay off a couple weeks from now in the playoff time as well. If you're in Yahoo League, you can do the same, pick him up. If you're in a Yahoo League, some people might see that COVID designation and cut him, especially if your league didn't expand IR spots for COVID. But he's a guy I'm probably willing to spend, you know, 8 to 10% of my fab budget on because you could use him in the playoffs potentially and have a big payoff there. Then next up, we'll talk about the guy that benefits the most from him and Mark Ingram testing positive for COVID. That's Gus Edwards. He played on 20% of snaps this last week. Not the greatest total there, but he was still more than both Mark Ingram and Justice Hill. He had three carries for six yards, 0.6 fantasy points. Not very good day overall there. But if he's the workload running back, he's going to get at least 15 carries. So that really benefits him. It's not a great matchup against Pittsburgh, but James Robinson was able to put up 70 yards. The Pittsburgh defense has been hit or miss against the running backs. They've been really good some weeks and really average other weeks. Uh, but he's owned in 7% of ESPN leagues, 29% of Yahoo leagues. So pretty good chance he's out there for a starting running back. He's a guy that could potentially start this week and next week for the Ravens too. So you get a little bit of value there too as well. Obviously, you got to check out the other name if you're in a deeper league is Justice Hill. Uh, so he should be getting some carries in this game as well. He's just as hell to me. He's a guy that you want to make like a zero dollar or a one dollar bid on. I guess that word is probably you know five to ten percent of your fab budget. Just depends on if you need a running back this week or next week. Then probably the best running back pickup going forward for the rest of the season is going to be James White, and he played on fifty seven percent of snaps this past week. Up a lot for him. He hasn't been playing as much lately. They've been using Rex Burkett more often as that pass catcher because he can run and pass catch. But Burkett's going to be done for the year. I believe he had a torn ACL. And James White's the one that benefits the most from that. Sonny Michelle's going to be active on game day. But him and Damian Harris both do not catch passes. So look for White to be a valuable asset in half-point PPR and full-point PPR leagues. He had five carries for 19 yards. Nine targets, six receptions, 64 yards overall. And then he had 14.3 fantasy points. He's owned in 36% of ESPN leagues, 40% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against the Cardinals this week in Week 12. If the Patriots were to get behind in this game, he should see a lot of run. Should be a pretty positive game for him. And he definitely has a lot of value going forward, like I said. Probably the best running back to pick up potentially for just this week, but has long-term value as well, is Wayne Gallman. And he played on 59% of snaps two weeks ago. It was the last time he played. They had a bye week this past week. 16 carries, 53 yards, two touchdowns, two targets, one reception, seven yards, 19 fantasy points overall. Owned in 34% of ESPN leagues. So a lot of people did drop him last week since he was on bye. Yahoo leagues, he's owned in about 55% of leagues. He actually saw about a 5% increase in Yahoo leagues. So the people in Yahoo leagues were getting prepared while the people in ESPN leagues were cutting him because of the bye week. Goes against Cincinnati this week should be a very favorable matchup for him. I expect them to be leading in this game, especially without Joe Burrow playing in this game now that he's done for the year. He should see carries later on in the game as well as they're trying to ice the clock. I mentioned two other guys. They were both under 50% owned on ESPN, but on Yahoo they were closer to 63 66%, and that was Zach Moss, Bill's running back. I think he's a guy that if he's available in your league, you should try to pick up. Because going down the stretch, they might lean on him a little bit more, especially when they play more bad weather games in Buffalo. And then Salvin Ahmed for Miami. He's a guy I definitely consider, but in the lead running back three weeks in a row. Miles Gaskin could be back as well this week. Matt Breida returned last week, so we'll just have to see how that situation plays out. I wouldn't spend as much on him, but just definitely a guy to consider as well. So now we're going to get into more of the handcuff running backs. But I'll talk about Carlos Hyde first since he's the most relevant handcuff running back at the time. He returned lineup last week, played on 70% of snaps, had 14 carries, 79 yards. Excuse me, this should say one touchdown instead of two. But he had one touchdown, three targets, two receptions, 16 yards, 19 fantasy points. Owned in 33% of ESPN leagues, 46% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against the Eagles this week in Week 12. Not the best matchup for him, but if they give him the carries like they did last week, he should be very productive if Chris Carson was to miss again. Once again, we don't know if Chris Carson is going to be out this week, but if he was, Hyde would have a ton of value. So Hyde is a guy you definitely want to pick up, stash on your bench. For this week, if 
Carson misses, but he's also a guy you want to stash on your bench for the future because Chris Carson does have a high injury history. So even if he does come back, maybe he gets hurt again. Wouldn't be a surprise to me. He's missed a lot of time more than they thought he was going to miss, so maybe this is more like a Joe Mixon situation. But definitely a guy that you want to stash on your bench, especially if you're a team that is pretty much got your playoff spot guaranteed. Last but not least, we got the, all the the other key handcuff running backs to roster, especially if you're a team that has an open spot or you have already clinched your playoff spot and you don't need a, any fillers. And these are guys that if they were in the lead back role, they could have a lot of value. So we'll start off with Alexander Madison for the Vikings. He's always one injury away for from playing time, and Devin Cook has an injury history. Alexander Madison owned in 35% of ESPN leagues, 33% of Yahoo leagues. Definitely a shot to pick him up there, especially if something would happen to Cook. Then we got Boston Scott, uh, 29% of ESPN leagues, 29% of Yahoo leagues. Uh, so Miles Sanders has been banged up a lot this year. If something would happen to him again, Miles, Boston Scott could have some more value once again. Then Tony Pollard, once again, Ezekiel Elliott pretty much has never gotten hurt in his career. Uh, the only time he's really missed time is when he's been suspended. But if he were, if something were to happen to him, Pollard would be the guy to step up. Owned in 22% of ESPN leagues, 19% of Yahoo leagues. So good chance that he's out there as well. And then last but not least that I consider on this list is Devontae Booker. He's Josh Jacobs' backup. Jacobs has an injury history once again as well. Booker's owned in 7% of ESPN leagues, 10% of Yahoo leagues. And he's shown he can be productive when he has gotten the carries this season. So definitely a guy that you want to stash. Then we'll move over to the wide receiver position. So first off, we got Corey Davis playing on 74% of snaps, 7 targets, 5 receptions, 113 yards, 16.3 fantasy points. Very good day for him once again overall. 47% owned in ESPN, 51% owned in Yahoo. He goes against the Colts this weekend. Not the best matchup in the world, but A.J. Brown is banged up. Uh, I don't think we've had a status on him yet. And then John o. Smith re-aggravated his ankle. So if both those guys were to miss, Corey Davis would be the main guy for the passing game. So he's probably a guy you want to spend, you know, 5% of your fab budget on or so. Just depends on if you need a wide receiver to throw out there, you know, this week or the coming weeks. He's been pretty solid overall this season, except for the one week where he goose-egged. Then we got Michael Pittman Jr. He's probably one of my favorites. I mentioned him last week as well. Played on 80% of snaps, three targets, three receptions, 66 yards, one touchdown, 15.6 fantasy points, owned in only 26% of ESPN leagues, 44% of Yahoo leagues. I think he's definitely a guy worth picking up. Goes against Tennessee this week, who hasn't been that good against the pass. And should be another game, solid game for him overall. Last time against Tennessee, he went for 101 yards. So look for him to repeat that once again. He's definitely a guy I'd consider spending you know, 8 to 12% of your fab budget on, especially if you do need a wide receiver. He's definitely got a lot of upside. Then, talk about a guy with high upside potential week to week. is Nelson Aguilar playing on 75% of snaps, 9 targets, 6 receptions, 88 yards, 1 touchdown, 20.8 fantasy points, only owned in 10% of ESPN leagues, 20% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against a poor Atlanta defense in week 12. He's been pretty good this year, honestly. I think he had the one goose egg week in the bad weather game. He's not seen quite as many targets, but he has scored quite a bit of touchdowns this year. He's got two nine-target games, though. So if he gets anywhere close to that, he definitely has some value. But he's a guy that I'm probably willing to spend, you know, 2 to 4% of my fab budget on. Should be a pretty good matchup for him this week, though. But, no, he does have some volatility as well. Then we got Tim Patrick. Pretty much talked about Tim Patrick every week in this but he played on 83% of snaps, 8 targets, 5 receptions, 119 yards, 16.9 fantasy points. 14% owned in ESPN, 21% owned in Yahoo. Goes against the Saints this weekend. Not the best matchup in the world, but he's a guy that you can always plug in and do all right with. He's a guy that you could probably stash on the bench and play him in better matchups as well. So he's a guy for me, kind of like Aguilar, 2-4% to of your fab budget. Then we move over to the tight ends, and honestly, the tight ends are the exact same guys I mentioned last week. So we got Logan Thomas. He, If you got him this week, you played him, you did, he, he disappointed you. He only had 2.8 fantasy points. He had five targets, two receptions, six yards, one carry for two yards as well. Still playing on a high percentage of snaps, 90% in this game. They were ahead in this game. I think against Dallas, they're going to have to throw the ball more, and he should be a beneficiary of that. 29% owned in ESPN, 53% in Yahoo. Like I said, goes against the Cowboys this week, so it should be a pretty good matchup for him. Then we got Jordan Reed once again. Last time he played, 44% of snaps. Six targets, five receptions, 62 yards. 
11.2 fantasy points, and he's owned in only 13% of ESPN League, 16% of Yahoo Leagues, goes against the Rams this week. And the Rams, if you're going to beat them anywhere in the passing game, is probably the tight end. So he could be a guy that has a good week this week. So if you're, if you're looking for somebody to stream at the tight end position, Jordan Reed could be your guy. Could have some value going forward as well and good matchups. And he's definitely a guy I'd consider picking up. He's probably, you know, a 3 to 5% of your fab budget type of guy at tight end. Logan Thomas, I consider more like a 2 or 3% of your fab budget type of guy. Then we got Dalton Schultz played on 91% of snaps, six targets, four receptions, 25 yards, one touchdown, 12.5 fantasy points, owned in 25% of ESPN leagues, 21% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Washington football team this week. Should be a pretty good matchup for him. The tight end position is probably where they're most vulnerable. So he is a guy that I would consider this week and going forward and good matchups. You know, 2 to 3% of your fab budget type of guy once again. Then last but not least, we got the defenses to consider for Week 12. And we got some good ones out there, honestly. I'll start off with the Green Bay Packers. They are owned in 35% of ESPN leagues, 34% of Yahoo leagues. So uh, available in about two-thirds of leagues. Good chance they're out there. Goes against Chicago in Week 12. Nick Foles is banged up. And Mitchell Trubisky is banged up as well. This could be a game where Chicago has to start Tyler Bray at quarterback. And if that happens, it should be a very good game for Green Bay's defense. Otherwise, you're playing with... Two quarterbacks that have kind of been mediocre at best, and they're both banged up. So definitely a good matchup for them. Then I got Seattle up next. They haven't been the best defense this year. They stepped up when it mattered against Arizona, though, which was nice to see. Having Carlos Dunlap in there and having Jamal Adams back definitely made an impact. Uh, Hopefully they get Shaq Griffin back at their corner this week. And you're looking at them being owned in 20% of ESPN leagues, 28% of Yahoo leagues. Goes against Philadelphia this week. Man, Philadelphia has definitely struggled on offense this year, especially Carson Wentz, the quarterback. So it could be a good matchup for Seattle, especially to stream this week. Then last but not least, we got the New York Giants, owned in 16% of ESPN League, 17% of Yahoo League, so a very, very good chance that they're out there. Go against Cincinnati this week, and Cincinnati is, might have the worst offense in the NFL right now, now that Joe Burrow is done for the season. Ryan Finley did not impress last year. I'd be surprised if he did anything this week. And the Giants' defense honestly has looked good at times this year, and they've been stepping up more so of late. But with that being said, these are my waiver wire picks for the week. If you guys have any questions about the waivers in general, who you should pick up, who you should drop, any question, more questions about anyone I mentioned in this video, please feel free to reach out to me, whether it's down in the comments, at my email, coachcraigsports at gmail.com, on Twitter, at coachcraigsport, or on the Coach Craig Sports Facebook page. If you guys liked and enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It helps build the community that we're trying to build at Coach Craig Sports. And that's one for you, the viewers, helping you guys with your fantasy football teams, helping you guys win more in your fantasy football leagues, and hopefully bring some championship trophies home in this 2020 season. If you are a new or current subscriber who's yet to do so, also hit that notification bell. It lets you know every single time I post up a video. Like I've been saying, I put up about five videos a week, usually Monday through Friday. Uh, like I mentioned in my last video, I did the starts and sits last week and on Saturday. Uh, and I want to know your guys' opinions on whether you guys like that or not. Obviously, we have a little bit more information on Saturday than we do on Friday. If that's more beneficial for you guys, just let me know. And then last but not least, be sure to check out my articles on the Podcastic Network and support myself there, support all the other writers there as well. We do a weekly Start Sit article. Most recently, I did a Dynasty article. And last but not least, check out the Two Point Podcast. That's where my best friend and I, we both go through the matchups for the week and do a recap for the week. The recap comes out on Monday. The preview for the Thursday night game or this week, the Thursday games come out on Thursday morning. And then on Friday, we have the other games for the week come out as well. Hopefully you guys enjoy all that content. Hopefully you enjoy the content I've been putting out here as well. I appreciate it if you supported me and all the others involved in those projects. And with that being said, this is all we got for this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed and have a great rest of your day.